Here are five football legends who almost died. And we start with Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, CR7 almost died during his first stint at Manchester United. It started out one fateful morning when Ronaldo uncharacteristically overslept and was late for training. He was woken up by a call from the gaffer who wasn't very pleased with him. So he immediately hopped out of bed, got ready in no time and left the house. He took his new Ferrari, the only car fast enough to help him beat the clock. With his adrenaline pumping and the clock ticking, Ronaldo hit the road and sped toward his team facility. It seemed like he might make it just in time, until he entered a dark tunnel and the light almost went out on his life. As he drove through the tunnel, weaving and dodging, trying to see what was ahead of him, Ronaldo suddenly drove right over a puddle of oil, which caused his tires to lose traction. And that was when it happened. His brand new Ferrari slammed into the tunnel wall with a bone chilling crash. His Ferrari got completely totaled, but much more chilling was that Ronaldo's life flashed before his eyes, but miraculously he walked away from the wreckage without a single scratch on his body. He started the day by being late for training, but he very nearly ended it being late himself. But Ronaldo is not the only football legend who almost died in a car crash. Neymar did too, but in the Brazilian's case, he did not even know much about what was happening. On an especially dark night on the 5th of June, 1992, Neymar Jr.'s life and career almost ended before they had even started. A four-month-old Neymar was in the car with his parents as they made their way to visit a relative. Then while they were on the highway, it suddenly began to rain heavily. The storm it came with was so intense that they could barely see a few feet in front of them. They were so anxious to quickly reach their destination safely before the storm got worse. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. Neymar's father was the one driving and he was really struggling to see. Then, boom, out of nowhere, all he could see was bright lights, which was quickly followed by a crash. A car appeared out of nowhere, and despite Neymar Sr.'s last-ditch efforts to swerve out of the way, the two cars collided, and the sound of metal crushing against metal was deafening. Neymar Sr.'s hip bone was dislocated, and he was in excruciating pain. As he tried to regain his bearings with his wife side by side, he realized that his son was nowhere to be found. Panic set in, and his heart raced faster than ever before. The storm showed no mercy as the couple frantically searched for their missing son. The sound of the rain pounding against the car made it almost impossible to hear anything else. But then, they managed to hear a faint cry coming from the car. They traced the sound, and it led them to where Neymar was, under the front seat of the car. He was crying, bleeding, and had a shard of glass embedded in his forehead. But at last, he was alive, and that was all that mattered to his parents. Relief washed over them. They quickly got him out and rushed him to the hospital. He was alright eventually, and even though he may not have clear recollections about this very event, Neymar Jr. very nearly lost his life that day. But near-death experiences don't always come in the form of accidents. In Thiago Silva's case, it was a disease that very nearly took him from us. Back in 2005, when he was just 21 years old and on a loan from Porto to Dynamo Moscow, Thiago Silva was diagnosed with tuberculosis, a rare bacterial infection which nearly sucked the life out of him. He was in Russia, happy and putting in work every day to develop his career, but little did he know that he was dying inside. At first, he felt alright, but eventually he began to feel it. High fever, constant coughing, and sweating were his initial symptoms. But soon, he lost his ability to walk, and even breathing became a problem. He was rushed to the hospital, and the doctor said it was tuberculosis. He was in the hospital for a whole six months, and the center back said he would be given three or four injections every day, along with about 10 to 15 pills. But even with everything, Silva did not immediately get better. And you know what was even more scary? The doctors told him that he could have died if he was brought to the hospital just two weeks later. That's how bad it was. He was in a small hospital room for six months trying to recover. The room didn't even have a toilet, just a hole in the floor. During this period, Thiago Silva made the decision to permanently retire from football at his young age. He didn't believe he would survive this, and even if he did, he didn't think he would ever return to the level of fitness required for professional football again. He had already given up, but his mother persuaded him to keep fighting. And he did. Although long and grueling, Silva made a miraculous journey to recovery. After recovering, his journey back to fitness started, first with half-hour walks every morning, then followed by jogging. Eventually, he got better and was ready to play professional football again. He was signed for the second time by his coach at Fluminense and once again became an important player before going on to be the legend we all know and love. But all that could have been a dead dream in 2005. But two years before that, it was Ibrahimovic who nearly died. In the world of football, only very few players can match the ferocity of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He strikes fear into the hearts of his opponents and sometimes 
sometimes even his teammates. But there was a time when even Zlatan himself was scared for his life, and it wasn't on the pitch. During his time at Ajax, a young Zlatan formed a deadly partnership with Egyptian forward Ahmed Hossam Hussein, better known as Mido. The two were unstoppable and a force to be reckoned with in their first season together. But in the second season, everything changed. Mido was relegated to the bench while Zlatan remained favorite, and Mido didn't take it well, not at all. Dark clouds began to rise, and they burst open during a match against PSV Eindhoven in March 2003. Mido was subbed on in the second half, while Ajax were behind, and once he came up, he decided to take out his pent-up frustration on Zlatan. He refused to pass the ball to the Swede, who he now saw as his enemy, but that wasn't enough for him. After the game, he stormed into the dressing room and started insulting everyone, including the manager. As we all know, Zlatan is not one to take insults, so he responded in kind. So, Mito took it up a notch and threatened to kill Zlatan if he continued to talk back at him. But again, Zlatan isn't one to back down, so he kept throwing words at Mito. Mito got madder and madder, and eventually, he got tired of throwing just words. He picked up a pair of scissors and threw it at Zlatan. The scissors were heading straight for Zlatan's head. It was the Swede's reflexes that saved his life, literally. He managed to dodge the scissors at the very last second, and they hit the concrete wall behind him. Everyone in the dressing room was stunned. If those scissors had hit him, Zlatan would surely be dead. Mito publicly admitted to throwing the scissors at Zlatan, so there was no question of it being just a rumor. Because of the gravity of his offense, Mito had to leave the club immediately. The window wasn't open, but FIFA made an exception for this unique case and let him move to Celta Vigo in March. He was so close to becoming a murderer, very nearly killing one of the greatest strikers of his generation. But while everybody else on this list came close to death, Christian Eriksen is the one guy who actually died and resurrected, and it happened on the pitch during a live football match at the Euros. What was supposed to be a great stage in his career almost proved to be the end of Christian Eriksen's life. Denmark was playing their opening game against Finland in front of their home crowd. The stadium was packed. Everyone had come out to enjoy a beautiful game of football. But what they saw just before the end of halftime was one of the most terrifying things ever. In the 42nd minute, while anticipating a throw-in, Eriksen suddenly collapsed near the touchline with no one near him. Simon Kerr immediately leapt into action, performing CPR and ensuring Eriksen's airways were not blocked before the medics came and took over. The game was temporarily suspended as everyone watched on grimly. For minutes, the professionals tried to get Eriksen to wake up, but he wasn't moving. They tried everything they could, but he wasn't responding. Everyone watched on in a mix of shock, fear, terror, and hope. Was this man really just going to die right here on the pitch during a live game? The medical team was trying their best, but it was a race against time. They needed to ensure that too long didn't pass without Eriksen getting oxygen to his brain. If not, that would have been it. The medics used a defibrillator to try and jumpstart his heart, but he remained unresponsive and people started to fear the worst. The medics then decided to rush him to a nearby hospital. This had gone beyond them. The entire world held its collective breath until an hour later when it was announced that Christian Eriksen was alive and stable. Honestly, we were all just happy that Eriksen was alive. No one expected that he would ever kick a ball again, but he was determined to keep going, so he got implanted with a cardioverter defibrillator. And two years later, he still balling with Manchester United, winning trophies and dominating the midfield whenever he plays. It was truly a miracle.